Hello, Facebook. I'm adjusting you and making myself short again. I just gotta figure this out, huh? An impromptu dinner making episode today. Okay, is that good? Not really. I'm gonna move you back just a little more so you can see the cutting board. And you know what? If you can't see the top of my head, so be it. Hey, everybody. Happy whatever 10th day of quarantine or however we are now. Um, I just finished an online yoga class with Andrew Schultz. Andrew, thank you so much for being on. Hey, Kathy. Kathy, I'm so bummed to have missed your St. Patrick's Day. Well, I didn't miss it. You canceled it. Thanks a lot, but you did the right thing. I still want to get that corned beef because I'm going to have another St. Patrick's Day deal here for me and Patrick and the kids and the dog, even though only I will eat the corned beef. Patrick might have a little bit. So anyway, I was just doing this online yoga class and yoga is amazing, but it really wears me out. And that's kind of weird because, you know, I'm an athlete. I can go ride bikes for miles and miles and miles and run and do all kinds of things, but yoga, it's just a little different animal. So I don't know what the deal is with that. But anyway, I was getting hungry and I thought, well, what am I going to make for dinner? I don't want anything really heavy because I've been eating <laughs> this homemade bread I made, like uh, maybe half this loaf I've already eaten and it's just so good. So I've been eating a lot of that kind of stuff, which is not good for the Buddha. So I wanted something really light and healthy. So that's what I'm going to have today. So I thought, well, what the heck, I'll just bring my friends on board with me and we'll all do it together. So that's why I look like this. I'm in my workout stuff still. I've actually been in my workout stuff all day. Not that I did any like sweaty workout stuff because I really didn't. Sorry, I'm getting all up in your face. Hey, Steph. Patrick is a-okay now. I won't say anything more about that, but he's feeling much better. <laughs> all right, guys. So this is one of my favorite meals and it's really very simple and very healthy. Sorry if my music's too loud. I love soups, especially in the winter, and just to have for lunch, have for dinner, have for a snack, afternoon snack. So I make a lot of soups, and this is probably my favorite soup. This is a cauliflower soup. You can make it cheesy or creamy or whatever, and I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. I'm just gonna start making it. So pretty much every soup that I make, hello, husband. Do you wanna say hi to everybody? You gotta come over on this side. He's back from his walk. Greetings, earthlings. <laughs> he How's everybody doing out there? He did a walk, I did my yoga. Usually I go on the walk, but I took the dog for a walk earlier. How's it out there? It's beautiful, it's cold. Yes, the dog really wants your attention now. The dog really wants me to take him for a walk now, but I can't take him for my long walks because he has to stop too many times. He's a lazy dog. So now that I'm done with my walk, I'll take Chase for a walk. <laughs> I wish we yeah. could show him, but he's down here and he's too oh short. My, oh my gosh. So, oh, oh, oh there he is. Can you say oh, hello to everybody? Yeah, she's not just a beastie. <laughs> All right. I'm That's Chase, the deaf dog. <laughs> so every Hi. soup, bye. I'm going to give her this mat because again, I'm too, I'm just too tall. Every soup I make, not really every soup, but most soups start with onion, onion and garlic. So just take an onion, chop it up. I'm going to be pureeing the soup so the onion doesn't have to be super diced. I just kind of chop it. But do what you want based on the kind of soup you're making. One onion ought to do it. Usually for soups, I do olive oil. So that's what I'm gonna do for this one. Sometimes you can, you can do ghee, you can do coconut oil, just some kind of fat to saute the vegetables in. So in this case, we are going to do a little olive oil. And as usual, the prominent brand in my household, Kirkland Signature. This is organic extra virgin olive oil, um, USDA certified organic, obviously buy, bought at Costco. They have a lot of brands, but that's the one I typically buy. If Kirkland, if Kirkland is willing to put its name on it, I know the processes they go through to do that. I know them very well. They're very rigorous and they do a very good job. They make sure that you have the best product at the best value and you can trust them. So just throw that onion in here. I'm also gonna do garlic, 
but you don't want to start with the garlic because garlic burns much more easily and it can get a very toasted garlic flavor versus a more subtle garlic flavor. So garlic, I'm probably going to put, I like garlic, garlic is really good for you, so I would probably go with three cloves. And again, I think I mentioned this the other day, I don't know if you're on there, but fresh garlic is the best way to go. Not the jarred, not even the peeled, even though that's easier. The fresh that you peel yourself is going to have the best flavor. So that's what I do, that's what I recommend. But do whatever works for you. As long as you're making your own food and you know what's going in there, it's not processed, that is really the point. Learn to make your own food, make it with simple, fresh ingredients, and your body will be much happier. And you'll save a lot of money. I've noticed, <laughs> I've noticed the credit card bill charges have gone down significantly since we've been in this um, shelter in place situation. Uh, significantly, I mean, we eat out quite a bit, probably at least three times a week, maybe more sometimes. So if you think about that, and if you are at all drinking in that endeavor, you're really spending a lot of money. So usually I would use a garlic press. That is my preferred method for garlic. But since I will be pureeing the soup with a stick blender, I'm just gonna chop it. So it's fairly big chops, but again, I'm gonna be pureeing it, so that's no big deal. So I'm gonna put that in now that the onions are there to kind of buffer it. But if you put garlic in there alone on its, on its own, without another um, vegetable or something to buffer it, it'll burn very quickly, very easily. And still in this situation, you wanna be careful because once you um, burn the garlic, it just has a totally different flavor. It doesn't, it doesn't mean it's a bad flavor, but. So I've got olive oil in here, one onion chopped up, and three fresh cloves of garlic just chopped up. So I don't usually do this. Well, let's start here. So this is a head of cauliflower, big, just one big head of cauliflower. I love cauliflower. It's one of my favorite vegetables. A lot of people don't think it's healthy because it's white. And they think, oh, the darker, the greener, the more purpley, the red, orange, whatever. But that's not true. Cauliflower is a very healthy vegetable. It's a cruciferous vegetable, which has a lot of benefits to it. Um, broccoli is cruciferous. Uh, Brussels sprouts are cruciferous. Now, I had this in the back fridge, so it kind of froze. That's why it's got this weird coloring to it. But anyway, I love this stuff raw, just by itself. I love it roasted. It's amazing roasted with just uh, some olive oil, salt, and pepper. I love it steamed. I love it mashed like a potato instead of potatoes. Uh, I like it pretty much any way possible. Big, big fan of cauliflower. And I don't care if nobody else will eat it because I'll eat the whole thing in this soup, obviously. So as this is going, you can kind of, I would wait till the onions get a little caramelized, a little browner, because that's going to deepen the flavor of the soup as well. So I'm going to wait on that. I'm going to keep chopping up this cauliflower. And the pieces don't have to be really small because you're going to put a broth in here. I'm going to use a chicken broth base and then some spices on top of that. You can use a vegetable broth if you're a vegan or a, or a vegetarian. You don't want any of the animal products in here. But to each his own, you can just any kind of broth. You can even just make your own broth with water and spices. But you see these? This is probably a good size. And like I said, I love raw cauliflower. I'm going to eat some. Even Chase loves raw cauliflower. Chase is the dog. Okay. So get that all chopped up. I'm using my Dutch oven here. This is Le Le Creuset. This is actually a wedding present. And these things are amazing. If you don't have any Le Creuset, put it on your wish list. And when they go on sale, or when you have a birthday, or a holiday, or you get married or something like that. These things are not cheap, but they are amazing. They're, I think they're cast iron, but they're coated with a um, porcelain of some sort. So they're essentially nonstick, not like a nonstick Teflon, but they're very nonstick. So nothing is sticking in here. You could cook eggs in here as long as you have the appropriate fat in there. And they're just great. I, um, I make soups in here. I, made, I baked the bread in here, thanks to Esther for that recommendation. The bread was freaking awesome. Like I said, I've eaten a half loaf in the past 24 hours. But Patrick likes it, the kids like it. And this is particularly good for braising. There are a couple of um, things I make. I make some beef short ribs, 
and you basically make them in here, brown them, put all the stuff in, and then put them in the oven for like three hours. And this can go right from stove top to oven, which is awesome. And I do a chicken coca bean, which I'll probably do for you guys maybe, um, maybe in a couple of days because I have all the stuff to make that chicken coca bean. Same thing, I make it in here. You can put it in the oven or you can just do it on the stove top. So it really depends. But the, the Le Creuset Dutch oven, um, I can't pick this up and look at it right now to see what size it is. I'd say the diameter, I mean, yeah, the diameter is, it looks like it's about 10 inches, I think. Or if you're a guy, I won't go there. It's, it's a family friendly show. Okay, so I'm gonna put these in here now. That was just a little rip on, you know. You know, you know, no need to say. All the cauliflower can just go right in there. See how much that made, that head of cauliflower? And cauliflower in the grocery store can be um, kind of expensive, believe it or not. And this is organic cauliflower. I bet you can guess where I got it. I got it at Costco, and it's $2.49 for a head of cauliflower. So I usually get at least two, sometimes three, whereas in the grocery store, it's significantly more expensive. And that, again, is that's kind of, and you think I'm an ad for Costco. That's kind of their go-to thing, is, is the best products at the best value. And I gotta say, it's, that's where I buy almost all of my groceries. There are a few things I can't get there, but $2.50 for a full head of organic cauliflower and it's locally grown, that's awesome. Okay, so that's in there. And I'm gonna do something I don't usually do, but we have a lot of sweet potatoes right now. Sweet potato, I already peeled it. Sweet potatoes are also very good for you. In fact, a lot of my high, high, hardcore athlete friends that swim in the morning, like really early in the morning, nobody can do that now because nothing's open. They will bake sweet potatoes and they'll take a sweet potato with them and that will be their recovery food after they swim because it's it's got all the things you need. I don't think it has protein, but super, super food basically. And those Jamaicans, you know, they like, what's his name, Usain Bolt? And what is the little sprinter's name? It's got like three names. Anyway, sweet potatoes. Uh, you can make a sweet potato soup. I've done that before. I just love them baked with um, butter, salt, and pepper, like a baked potato. You have to peel them. You can't eat the skin on a sweet potato. On a white potato, you can eat the skin. And it's, it's got some vitamins, good for you, but on a sweet potato, the skin is way too hard. But you can see these, um, it's a hard potato. They're also very good roasted, love them roasted. You gotta be careful because they do burn because the sugars in here are high. Okay, so throw that in here. I'm actually gonna fill this up with broth. So we're gonna cover all this stuff up. There we go. A little salt and pepper. Actually, I don't think I'm gonna put, I don't think I'm gonna put salt in there because the, the chicken base I use has some sodium in it, I guess. So I don't know if it's added or whatever it is. So mostly pepper. I'm not gonna put the salt in until later when I correct the seasonings. I am gonna put some curry powder in there. I love curry. It goes really well with the soup. Not a ton, it's not like you want to make it like Indian flavored, but a little curry in here is really good. Cumin, another thing I really like, I think that's gonna be good in here. Again, um, you know, I don't measure. So you just, once you start cooking more often, you kind of learn what you want from it. Thyme, I'm gonna put a little thyme in here. Time, 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 see what's become of me. I look around. Who is that? Cindy Lauper? No, it's the Bangles! I don't have any good music on here right now. It's playing some song I don't know. Otherwise, I'd enlighten you with my singing. Lucky you. This is an interesting ingredient. Sometimes I put it in, sometimes I don't. It's organic fennel seed, and it has a very strong flavor, like rye, um, fennel, rye. I wish you could smell it. It's kind of licorice smelling. I'm not gonna put a lot in here. Maybe a teaspoon. I don't think it's even a teaspoon. And these seeds are hard, but since we're going to be cooking this in the broth, they'll soften up. And then I'm going to be pulverizing it with a, um, a stick blender, so that will also make them softer. But it gives it a really nice flavor. So all the spices are in there. I haven't put any liquid in yet, but I'm gonna do that right now. This is gonna make a really nice, big, huge pot of soup. 
So I hope you're all getting some activity, whether it be inside or outside. Today I did not run or bike because my legs were a little fatigued from yesterday and the other three days where I did those things right in a row. So I, um, I just did some weights and some stuff around the house and took a walk with the dog. And then I saw Andrew was on Facebook when I was working earlier doing a yoga class. So I grabbed my mat and I did um, probably about 45 minutes of yoga and then my, my computer froze up. So I had, to, I had to stop and then I got hungry. And But like I was saying about yoga, it's a really nice discipline. It was hard for me to wrap my head around it before I did it. I tried it a few times. I'm like, how can I spend an hour, hour and a half here in this room when you know I couldn't stop my brain. I couldn't shut my brain off and just let it go. And I still have a hard time with that. When I'm in the yoga room, it's fine. I can, I can be in the moment, but doing it here, too many distractions in my office. Um, but it really, I started doing it two or three times a week in August. And I did that consistently for about three months. And my back, my arms, my posture, my neck, my whole upper body, and even my lower body a little bit. I mean, I do a lot of stuff in my lower body already with biking and, and running. But I felt so strong. I felt like my posture was so much better and I didn't have as much neck pain because I get a lot of neck pain because I'm always like this on my computer. And it made a huge difference. And then I went, um, then the holidays came and I went to New Zealand for like 10 days and it just kind of fell back to the wayside and I went back to my cardio of running and biking and spin and, and whatnot. But I, I really miss it and I need to get back into it. That has to be a part of my daily life. I figured, not, not daily, but maybe maybe twice, maybe three times a week like I was doing before. And it really made a big difference, so thirsty. So I highly recommend those of you who haven't tried yoga to try it. Now you might have to try it a few times to get the hang of the teacher to see what kind of yoga you want. There's tons of different kinds. Like one time I go to the Bay Club, I went to a class, um, I don't know, I just was grabbing a class early in the morning and it was a, um, it was too slow for me and I didn't like it and I was just kind of bored. I like it to be a little more active. I mean, a lot of times I'll sweat and I'll be really tired afterwards, which is a good thing. Okay, so I'm putting in a quart of water here and this is that better than base I've mentioned, better than bouillon and it's an organic chicken base and you buy it, it's not refrigerated, it's in the spice aisle at Costco and it's about a teaspoon per cup. So I don't know what I'm putting in here, a little over maybe. Maybe about four teaspoons, probably a little more, because it has really good flavor. Now you can buy the, the Tetra Pak broths, and that's fine, but I think they're more expensive. And this is just so easy. It's a small little container. You don't have to mess around with that Tetra Pak, and once you open it, it's only good for about three days. So you hate to waste that when you're making broth like that. So when you're making any kind of soup. So I just do this. I buy the Better Than Base, I think it's awesome. And they have beef or chicken and it is organic, which is important to me. So I filled that up most of the way because a lot of it's gonna boil off as I'm cooking this. So I'm gonna turn this up now and then that should be it. At the end, you can always adjust the seasoning. So that's when you decide, okay, does it need more cumin? Does it need more curry? Does it need more thyme? Does need more time. We all need more time. That's one of the things we cannot get back. Every second of every day is gone. So appreciate your time. I'd say that time and health are probably the two, two most fleeting things that, that are very important. Obviously, love and all those other things, but time and health, those are way at the top of the list for me. All right, so did I just distract myself? I think I did. So this is what you do, and I'm not going to subject you guys to sitting here for the next 45 minutes while this cooks, but I will show you what I'm going to do when this is done. So I'm going to simmer that, and it's going to soften all the vegetables, it's going to cook all the vegetables, and it's going to marry all those flavors with the spices and the broth and everything I put in there, and that's about 45 minutes, maybe even an hour. I'll put it, the cover on, in fact I'll do the cover right now. And then as it, you don't want it to boil over, so you're gonna have to turn down the heat or move the lid off. So when that's done, I cool it down a little bit and then I use the stick blender. Now you don't have to use a stick blender. You can use a Cuisinart food processor. You can use a Vitamix, whatever you want. You can leave it chunky if you want. I just like the creamy thick feeling and 
texture of a, a cream soup without putting cream in. So I use a stick blender. I'm not gonna plug it in now, but the stick blender. And I, if, if I had one once that was um, rechargeable, I didn't, I didn't like that. Go with the cord because you're never gonna have issues with it. So once this is cooled off, then you put the stick blender in there and you run it. Actually, I'll plug it in so you can hear it. Sound effects. Can you hear that? It's a little blade that goes here and it just pulverizes everything. So you can transfer it into a, to a Cuisinart or a, or a um, Vitamix, but that is a huge hassle because you won't be able to fit it all in. This, you just put it in there and you kind of move it around and up and down and it blends everything. The stick blender is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite kitchen gadgets of all time. And I use it a lot. You can do all kinds of other things with it. Like there's a whipped cream extension. Um, I have a big old KitchenAid stand mixer. That's what I usually use for that. But that thing and soups, they're like peas in a pod. It's awesome. So that's what I'll do once I blend that all. Then you taste the seasonings, you correct it or do whatever you want. You can add salt and pepper, cumin, thyme, whatever you want. And then it's up to you whether or not you want to add cream. If you want it super creamy, add some cream. I usually add some cream cheese because I really like the way that tastes with it. Uh, you can add that cheese I can never pronounce. Where I got this recipe originally was, um, I think it was Bon Appetit years and years ago, like maybe 15 years ago. So I've had it for a long time. And that called for cream. And the way you pronounce that cheese, G-R-U-Y-E-R-E, -E -E, I seriously have a mental block with the cheese because I can't pronounce it. I personally use Philly cream cheese. It just, you know, the kids have it because they eat bagels all the time. I just scoop some in and put it in there. And then I blend it again. So just depends on what you want. The cream would be awesome. You could put more butter in it if you want. It just depends on, on what you want out of the soup. I like it fairly healthy and, and you know, I don't really mind eating cheese, so that doesn't bother me. So that is what I do. And then I'm gonna make a salad as well. And then I'm gonna have some more of my delicious homemade sourdough. I gotta tell you guys, this was awesome, so good. So yesterday, especially, cause it was super crispy on the outside and it was warm. I had a couple pieces and then today I've just been slicing it and then putting it in the toaster and putting fresh grass-fed butter on it. Oh, so good. I don't know if this is a good thing for me to be making on a consistent basis though because it's bread and butter and there are other things I can eat that would be better for me like vegetables and things of that nature. So that is about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of another vegan, not, not vegan, well, not vegan because I use chicken broth, but another meatless meal and Remember to eat as healthfully as possible during this time. Get some act activity every day outside, some kind of doing burpees or walks or doing a few weights, something physical. Don't sit in your house all day. And um, connect with people. You know, that's, that's part of what this is for me. I'm a very social person. And having this outlet for me on Facebook has been really helping me get through this time of not being able to see my friends and be out there with, with the people of the world. So hang in there, I hope everybody's doing great, and have a wonderful Thursday night. Bye.